Welcome back, my loves. We are 20 weeks pregnant ah! and talking all about pregnancy skincare. I have been waiting to drop this video. It's controversial, not gonna lie. There are things I'm gonna be talking about in this video that not everyone agrees with, that I haven't heard anyone talk about before that I think are so legitimate and helpful for your pregnancy skincare journey. So we are gonna be talking about do's and don'ts, what you can and can't use, obviously. We're gonna be talking about what happens to your skin during pregnancy and also what products I would recommend. And I'm a registered nurse and holistic skincare expert who has been in the game of clean beauty blogging for five or six years now. So I have tested thousands of clean products. I know what works. I made changes based on the pregnancy that are really working for my skin. So I have so many nuggets of wisdom for you and I'm really, really excited to share them. This is the before. My skin is a little dry. I have some hyperpigmentation, some different things going on, which I'm gonna go over for sure. But I did wanna tell you that I'm not a doctor. I have a lot of information. I'm also a pregnant woman, so this is coming from you know my point of reference, my experience to try to help you. But if you have any questions, ask your doctor, have an open dialogue, get their feedback. That disclaimer had to happen, but now we can talk openly and freely as you know this is not medical advice. But let's talk about what happens to our skin during pregnancy. Yes, there are hormonal changes. Yes, our diet might be crazy because we have cravings or people tell us that we can just eat whatever we want so then we crave hyper palatable foods like french fries and ice cream. And when we eat that, we want more and makes our skin inflamed. So there's a lot going on during pregnancy, I don't wanna shame anybody that your poor diet is making you break out or making your skin freak out. There could be a lot of reasons, but do keep in the back of your mind that if you have cravings for sweets or you have cravings for fried foods, unhealthy foods, that's not your body craving something. You probably just ate more sweet foods because you're trying to be cool and relaxed because you finally get one chance to eat non-healthy food. So those are hyper palatable, you'll crave them more. Without all of that piece, the food piece, I wanna talk about skincare because that's what this video is about. So during pregnancy, you have hormonal changes that can make your skin extra oily, but it can also dry out your skin, make it lose moisture and elasticity at the same time. <laughs> so like the worst of both. <laughs> But not to worry, all the products that I'm using that I would recommend to a pregnant woman are things that can really help combat that and now work just as well as my pre-pregnancy skincare. And I'll tell you what swaps I made, why I made them, and we'll start with the don'ts of pregnancy skincare. So you don't wanna use retinol, High doses of vitamin A, which is retinol as a vitamin A derivative, can cause birth defects. Do we know if a little bit on the skin is really gonna do that? No. Are we gonna mess with it? No, not worth your baby's livelihood. So XNA on the retinol. One thing I get asked a lot, and I wanna debunk this myth, is about acids, especially salcyclic acid and alpha hydroxy acids, beta hydroxy acids. Over the counter salcyclic acid and other acids, are totally fine. Um, I forget what organization, I'm gonna look it up, actually debunked it and approved it. Yeah, so low-dose, over-the-counter salicylic acids have been reported to be safe by the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. So don't, don't worry about that. You can use a little acid, just don't get a crazy peel at an office and don't take oral salicylic acid, which I didn't even know is really a thing, but it is. So those are don'ts. Um, really, besides that, you want non-toxic things. You don't want endocrine disruptors. And personally, I have been on a huge mission to use all non-toxic products for years now, so that wasn't an issue for me. But for all you mamas who are out there trying to go through all your products and find out what is 
pregnancy safe, just know that most things aren't. All the brands I'm gonna talk about are completely clean, non-toxic, just like the video says, mama friendly. But if you wanna look at your products, you can look at the EWG Skin Deep database by product or by ingredient. You can also use the Think Dirty app in order to check to see if your products are pregnancy friendly. You don't wanna use any fragrance. You don't wanna use any chemical sunscreens that have oxybenzones that are um, endocrine disrupting. So keep it clean, get rid of the retinol. Also, I have chosen not to use CBD ingesting or in skincare, and I used to before just because we don't have enough data. So I'm just trying to keep it safe for this little peanut in the belly. So let's kind of talk about what I do and I'm gonna actually do it while I talk about it. Um, I am always masking in the shower. So I have been obsessed with Comvita Manuka honey through this process of pregnancy. It's antimicrobial, so it's fighting the breakouts that I primarily had in my first trimester that are healing. It also helps with um, hyperpigmentation. So I feel like it's a good preventative for melasma, which is so, so common. Pregnant women are very susceptible. Also post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which is old acne marks on my skin. So I've been using this almost every single day and especially on my chest. I've been dealing with some breakouts. Look at that bad boy. Breakouts on my chest from excess oil production. It's fine on my face, but on my chest and back, I'm like an 18 year old boy. So this helps with the acne, but also for the redness and irritation that I'm kind of suffering from. So could not recommend this more during pregnancy. It's like the safest thing on earth. Number two, this Coco Kind Alpha Hydroxy Acid Cleanser. Mild AHAs, very safe. They help prevent against acne. So eat more weird things, more hormones, more acne. So I'm using this face, neck, chest, back, all over the place. I absolutely love it. It is gentle. It still is hydrating. And this would be great for anyone with any skin type, unless you have a really, really dry skin, which then you could use it maybe once in a while if you're in the cycle of your period where you break out more. Whoa. Then I've been ice rolling like a champion. This is the Skinny Confidential Ice Roller. At first, I was kind of hating on it, like, it's so expensive. I like my Amazon one. Now I'm like, oh, girl, I actually really, really like this ice roller. And this is great for acne prevention. It's also great if you have a breakout to take down the pain and inflammation. Then I have been loving these snail bee hydration masks from Benton. If you're feeling extra dry, this is a great way to add hydration without breaking out the skin. You can buy a 10 pack on Amazon for pretty cheap. I think every pregnant woman should have a sheet mask in their arsenal and most are not clean. Then I've been using the Coco Kind Glow Essence. This is my holy grail for winter. An essence is great to use if you're feeling dry instead of a toner. It infuses the skin with nutrients, hydration. It feels really, really good. It also creates a vehicle for your skin to absorb your serums better. Don't forget the chest and neck as well. Another Coco Kind favorite, I actually, I have a lot of Coco Kind products in this routine. Obviously it's very safe and it's very affordable, so I like to share those kind of products. But this is the Coco Kind Revitalizing Eye Product. And I love that it has a silver tip, so you can use it to kind of massage the product in deep puff and cool the under eye. And personally, I'm someone who does get Botox and I can't get Botox. I didn't get Botox for eight months before I got pregnant. Literally had an appointment to get filler and Botox. The day I found out I was pregnant, had to cancel it. So I'm like, cool, cool, cool. This is gonna be probably like two years of no injectables. So 
I'm covering a lot of stuff in this routine, which can really, really help with wrinkles. Because not only do you want your skin to be clear and healthy, but you don't want to look tired before you even have the baby. I'm like, I'm going to look a hot mess and not get any sleep, but at least during pregnancy, especially in the second trimester, I would like to look well rested. So really, really love this eye cream. I think it's a great formulation for depuffing, helping with some dark circles. And if you're not using eye cream, just get after it. This is so affordable. Then I go in with the vitamin C. Normally I use a CBD vitamin C from St. Jane. I absolutely love that. But since I'm not using CBD, this three ships has mushroom. Oh, look, I'm almost out of it. Maybe not. Okay. It has hyaluronic acid. It has mushrooms and it has vitamin C. So it's really, really hydrating, nourishing to the skin, gentle, but you still get those antioxidant actives to help protect your skin, especially from oxidative stress from the sun, which we definitely want to do when melasma is such a reality. Like I will do anything to prevent melasma. I put on sunscreen everywhere, every day. I'm probably still gonna get it. All you mamas out there who have suffered from melasma, you know how hard it is to get rid of. So if you can prevent it with sunscreen, vitamin C, a big hat, do anything you can. Then I go in with the Cococcine Ceramide Barrier Serum. Ceramides are really important because they help restore your skin's barrier. They help seal in hydration. They pretty much do everything opposite of what your hormones are trying to do to throw you off track and ruin your glowy, healthy skin. So adding in extra ceramides is great. Also, this mama is 32. A lot of us are having babies in our 30s and 40s now, and so our skin needs are different. So we're not only dealing with aging, normal signs of collagen loss and ceramide loss, but we're pregnant. So we really need all the help we can get. And this is a great product that I use all the time, even when I'm not pregnant. So two serums, that's me, an active, and then a more hydrating, barrier, nourishing kind of serum. Then I go in with the Restorative Tonic Mist from January Labs. I'm obsessed with this. If you have not bought this product, this is the most healing, soothing, nourishing, hydrating serum, mist, sorry, not serum, ever in the world. It is incredible. It has aloe, it has sodium PCA. There's a lot of confusion about the difference between dry and <clears throat> dehydrated. So dehydrated means that it's lacking water content. Aloe is very hydrating because it's watery. There's a difference between dry and dehydrated. So this helps with the dehydration and something more occlusive like a facial oil helps with dry skin. You need both in order to have that glowy, dewy complexion that you want. So I cannot stress how important it is to layer your hydration and then seal it in with moisture, which we're obviously gonna do. If I'm talking fast, I'm sorry. There's just so much I wanna cover and I don't want this to be 800 years long. So mist also, mm, so good, go all the way down. Nate also loves this. So if you want a stocking stuffer for your husband, do it. He might be like, what the heck is this? But he will love it. Nate uses it twice a day. Okay, so that's in there. <sighs> Feels so good. Then I'm gonna go in with a facial oil. And I'm using the Mila Clarity Oil. It's a little bit pricey. It's really the only thing that's pricey in this routine. I think it's totally worth it. It's great for acne prone skin. It's a very light oil that's moisturizing. So again, it is sealing in all of the beautiful hydration that we just added. And I go pretty heavy with this oil because I have been now addicted 
to gua shaing my skin through pregnancy because can't do Botox and filler. <laughs> Sad but true. I'm puffier than normal. My water retention is up and it's just gonna keep getting worse. So gua sha is great because it helps stimulate my lymphatic drainage. I can get a visible lift tightening, also visible wrinkle reduction with a combination of a really good oil and a gua sha practice. So I love my wildling stone, worth its weight in gold. I mean, the cost per use is like free at this point because I use it so much. And um, I would go to their Instagram and watch some tutorials. This isn't a gua sha tutorial video, but I do have a few tips. And my first tip is every time you use your gua sha stone, you want to wash it. Make sure you have clean tools, especially if you're breaking out a lot. The other thing is you want to stimulate a little bit of lymph drainage on your neck before you get into it. <sighs> Another tip, you do not want to push very hard. This is not you raking the skin. This is not you pressing. You want feather-like movements. You want to just feel a minute pressure, little bit. If you're getting really red and irritated, this is not how you're supposed to gua sha. So not only can you do the lifting, but I found that it's really, really great for fine lines, taking the comb edge. And I do it to plump my lips, help with lip lines, help with fine lines and wrinkles. And it really does work. I see such a difference and it's the only thing right now that I can do in order to achieve that. So I feel lifted, I feel less wrinkly, feel a little snatched. Gua sha, mamas, gua sha. Feel beautiful, it's really my hot tip. But we are not finished yet because after I do my gua sha and my oil, I like to use a lip product and obviously I love this, this is gone. It's the Tower 28 Lip Gloss. It is so hydrating, the Shine On Lip Jelly, actually, and this is the Clear Shade Chill. It has really great hydrators. It just makes my lips look plump, especially with the gua sha that I did on my lips. Then I apply the best sunscreen on earth. You need to buy this. They also sell a verse at Target. Um, if you're interested, I'm thinking about doing a verse Holy Grail video because there's a lot of things that I like from Versed and it's so, so cheap. Like I said, you can get it at Target. I think I just said that. Pregnancy brain. Comment below if you're also dealing with pregnancy brain and trying to vlog. Not trying to vlog, but just dealing with pregnancy brain. So this is an incredible SPF that's all mineral based. It doesn't go on white. It has a more of a skin toned color and I have read reviews on their website that say it's also still good for um, deeper melanated skin. <clears throat> and it's broad spectrum 35. It not only has ingredients um, for mineral SPF protection from the sun, but it has moringa seed and a few other things that are supposed to help with blue light protection inside. So if you're not going outside or it's winter, you're like, oh, I don't need any sunscreen. Put your sunscreen on, even if you're in the house. Mama Celeste said to do it, do it. It's worth it. I mean, every single bit of light pollution, like if you see light, if a window's open, if you're in your car, light bulb shining in your face, ring light on your face. You want protection from the light pollution. Screen in your face, looking at your laptop like you are now. Get this SPF, it's only 20 some odd dollars. It's very affordable and baby safe. And don't forget to put it on your chest that's scarring and breaking out, which we'll be doing a 
whole video series on all of the treatments I'm going to do after I'm done breastfeeding, including fraxeling my chest. So stay tuned for that. And now the Foch is completely done, but I want to share two other products because skincare is not just your face. Um, type A deodorant. One of the things that's really, really important, a lot of first time moms, newly pregnant women are like, shit, my deodorant has aluminum and a bunch of crap that's harmful for my baby. So I have been using and loving type A deodorant for I think like five, six years now. It is completely clean, aluminum free, it actually works. And I've always been someone with BO. Godspeed, I'm so jealous if you don't and you're someone who doesn't stink. I stink, I sweat. I've tried so many different natural deodorants that just did not work for me. Nate's like, babe, you need some better deodorant. So this works, we actually both use it. So it works for men as well. This one has charcoal and it's vanilla almond milk scented. Really nice, sounds kind of weird, but I love it. And then for my body, I use the Coco Kind Sake Body Lotion, which has natural lactic acid from the fermented sake in there to help with, you know, clogged pores and anything acne related, but it's also really hydrating, nourishing, moisturizing. So it's the best of both. You can use it everywhere. You can use it on the belly. I've been trying to use it twice a day on the belly and then once a day everywhere else, whenever I shower morning or night. So love this. And those are all of my pregnancy safe skincare recommendations. If you have tried anything that you're absolutely obsessed with and you think I should try or any brands that you'd love me to test, drop it below. I would love to do that for you. And I'm just really grateful to have you here. The response to the pregnancy content has been so wonderful and it just really warms my heart and motivates me to show up and try to share every bit of helpful information that I've retained over the past 20 weeks of pregnancy. So I will see you next week and we will have lots of fun stuff to go over, obviously. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, my loves. Subscribe if you haven't already. It does mean the world. And that's it. Mwah.